Hello everyone. Welcome to Legacy Ace Academy. Recently, there was a massive shift or a massive evolution in the criminal justice system of India. And as a part of this, Criminal Procedure Identification Bill 2022 was introduced in Lok Sabha. So in this video, we will see what is this Criminal Procedure Identification Bill? What are the debates surrounding this? And what are the opinions against this particular criminal procedure identification bill. Let's see the context. It is said that this particular criminal identification bill is unconstitutional. Okay. And it is a violation of fundamental rights. And we will discuss why is it called the violation of fundamental rights and what are the key provisions of this particular bill. Why government wants to collect bio samples for the crime and the concern it raises. Okay. So we will discuss what are the concerns. So in this context, Okay, because this bill has been tabled in the Lok Sabha recently, we will be discussing the key highlights of this particular bill. So this is an amendment bill. As I've already told you, it replaces the identification of Prisoners Act, which was a colonial act and which was passed in the year 1920. So from the last 110 years or 112 years for that matter, we have no regulation or a no law in order to regulate the identification of prisoners or identification of criminals in India. So what are the details that this particular bill aims to collect? The earlier act, that is the identification of prisoners act, demanded that the fingerprints and also footprints should be collected. Okay, This was what was demanded by the act of 1920. But the bill, the recently tabled bill, also includes iris, that is the eyes, scan, fingerprints, footprints, and the behavioral aspects like signature, handwriting, and also biological samples. And this is where the act becomes controversy. Act creates controversy when it talks about the biological samples, that is blood, semen, hair, and the swabs. And who are the criminals from which this particular details can be collected? Okay. There are three categories of people or persons from whom this particular identification marks can be collected. And the first one is it includes all the convicts convicted for a minimum of one year. If any person is convicted for more than one year, then such person should have, should produce all these documents. And the second one is the arrested person. Suppose tomorrow, if anybody is just arrested, okay, he's just arrested and even he has to produce all these documents. And the third person who is arrested under preventive detention law, okay, he's arrested under preventive detention law. Even this person is supposed to produce all these identification marks, including the biological samples and it is also said that if it is it's collected and what is to be done and this data that would be collected will be processed and will be stored with an organization called ncrb national crime records bureau for the span of 75 years for the span of 75 years ncrb to collect store and process the data Imagine this is the highlights of the bill that was tabled. What is the advantage? Why is, why do we need such a bill? So in this, we will also see, can any person resist this particular collection of the data? Okay. Suppose if you're arrested tomorrow, can you resist? Can you say that? No, I am not supposed to give this and this is a violation of my fundamental right. I am not giving you the identification. Can you say that? No, you can never say that. You can say that only with respect to biological samples. Okay. We have discussed the biological samples. The biological samples are semen, hair, okay, blood. These are some of the biological samples. Only with respect to these biological samples, two exceptions are provided under the bill. We will see what are those exceptions. The bill states that person accused of any offense can refuse to allow 
taking of his biological samples. But there are two exceptions. There are two exceptions. One is that those accused of offenses committed against women, any offense punishable with the imprisonment for a period that is not less than seven years, which means anyone accused or convicted under these two circumstances cannot cannot abide okay or cannot say that they are not okay to produce samples in in other words we can say that anybody convicted or accused by these two offenses should mandatorily provide their biological samples what is the issue with the others other people are mandatory to provide the data or the collection data apart from biological samples. For example, we have seen about the signature. Okay. So this anybody can say that I am not obliged or I cannot give you this particular sample. But with respect to biological sample, these two persons are mandatory. Okay. This they has they have to produce the biological samples. Now, let's see what is the main aim of the bill. Okay, why is it being tabled and what will be the application of this particular bill? See, imagine, for example, any data that is being collected from the crime scene, it is collected by NCRB, National Crime Records Bureau, it is processed and it is stored. And by using this biological sample that is blood, urine and semen, the DNA can be extracted. And this particular DNA fragment is stored and this particular DNA can be matched with any fragment or any DNA or any sample that is got from any other crime scene. For example, there is a crime scene in the city of Chennai and some particular DNA sample is extracted from this particular crime scene. And after many days or many months for that matter, in a crime scene in Allahabad, Again, a sample is got and when these two samples are matched, if they are matched, the DNA sample which is unique to a particular individual is matched, then it is confirmed that same person has, has carried out these two particular crimes. So this will be the application. It is a revolution when it comes to the criminal justice and also it is increased the conviction rates. It is also said that this particular Criminal Identification Amendment Bill okay, will enhance the investigative efficiency, it will increase the efficiency and it will also increase the conviction rate. Some examples, see look at here, it's a 29% conviction rate when we talk about the rioting related cases, any rioting related cases or we can talk about mob lynchings for that matter or mob violence, okay, in these particular cases the conviction rate is as low as 29%. When it comes to the heinous crimes like murder and rape, okay, the conviction rates are really less and they are at 39% and 41%. So in order to increase the convicting rates, conviction rates and create deterrence and create deterrence and fast track the investigative and the jurisdictional process, okay, in order to fast track the judicial process. So this particular amendment bill will help a lot. So what are the issues with the proposed bill? Why is it being debated and why is the opposition parties? You have seen there are some parties that are calling this bill as an unconstitutional one. So why is it being called unconstitutional? Okay. The first one, there's a lack of clarity. Lack of clarity with whom? The collection of these measurements. Okay. It is said that in the bill for convicts and also other persons. So even though this other person has not been defined in the bill, it is left to the discretion of the executive. So there is a high chance that the police can misuse this particular provision of other persons. Okay, This has not been defined. The accused and the convicts will not be aware of the provision that will not be aware of the provision that they can at least resist the collection of personal data. We have seen the two exceptions when it comes to the biological data. Okay, biological samples for that matter and the accused and the convicted will not be aware of this particular provision in the law. And it is also said that 75 years is the time period with which this particular data has to be 
maintained by the national crime records bureau and who is the one who monitors whether this data after 75 years is being destroyed or not okay there is no particular authority to in order to monitor if this data was deleted after 75 years or not okay this is a serious offense and when it comes to the violation of fundamental right which is being debated all over the country there are two fundamental rights that is said that this art this bill violates the one is the right to privacy which became a part in the case of puttaswami case and right to privacy was declared as a fundamental right in this context i want you to comment in the comment box which is that particular article which says that there is a right to privacy which particular article under the fundamental rights talks about right to privacy i want you to comment in the comment box so when you are collecting the biological and the behavioral samples of convicts and accused so it becomes a violation of right to privacy because these are unique these are unique to the individual and it becomes the violation of fundamental right that is right to privacy and the second fundamental right that is being violated is the right against self incrimination it says that any person any person cannot be forced in order to become witness against himself himself okay this is in this is a part of fundamental right and in this context i want you to comment in the comment box that particular article which talks about the right against self incrimination and right against self incrimination is only with respect to the criminal cases remember a possible prelims question in this context it is only against criminal cases and not against civil cases so these are the two articles in the constitution under the fundamental rights which will be which will get violated if this particular bill becomes an act okay i hope you have liked the video for more such enriching content please subscribe to legacy is academy have a nice day thank you